Okay. Okay, so do you all remember why uh, the story was coming in? Because here Krishna was saying that a lot of people are trying to endeavor for perfection. Okay, so once they get the perfection, which is um, knowing that they are body and they are, uh, they are not the body, they are the soul, they stop their search. So even those who know that they are, when they come to the understanding that they are not the body, they are the soul, hardly no one knows Krishna in truth. That means they do not understand Krishna in full. Why even uh, the devas are bewildered by the appearance and some activities about Krishna. Okay, like for example, yesterday I said how he will be chased by Mother Yashoda. He'll be so fearful and all that, right? So sometimes uh, it is inconceivable what Krishna is doing. So one story is very prominent uh, in Bhag from Bhagavatam is Brahma Vimohana Lila. So we have... Uh, Shamala Mataji to Mary. Uh, is that echo? Is that echo from my side? Could you could somebody tell me? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Uh, there's echo. The, the voice like cracking, Mataji. Cracking, huh? Okay. Your audio, I guess. Uh, my audio. Uh, okay, I'm going to make somebody. Uh, Janani, are you there? Okay, Jeremy is not here. Shamala Mataji, I'm going to put you as co-host and then I'm going to go out and come back here. Yeah. Okay, Mataji. Okay, I can leave you. You know, actually you can continue to narrate. I will leave and come back, okay? Okay, Mataji. Oh, I cannot. Uh, I, I don't have to end, right? I can just leave, isn't it? Okay, I don't know how uh, this works. If you leave, I think the whole meeting will shut down. Is it? Need to make... okay, I have to make you the oh, main I host. Think... Yes, okay, I make you the host. Yeah, like and then you transfer back to me, okay? So okay. I leave. Okay, let's, let's continue. And you carry on, yeah, Mataji? Oh, I have okay. to share the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, you, you tell the story, I'll come back. Okay, 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 okay. Mataji, okay. Okay, uh, so this is about Brahma Vimohana Leela. This is a pastime that happened in the land of Vrindavan. It is the stealing of the boys and calves by Brahma. So uh, one day after Krishna killed the demon Angasura, which is the snake demon, the cow boys were hungry. So along with Krishna, they went and looked for a place to uh, eat. Krishna brought them to a beautiful to the beautiful bank of uh, Yamuna River filled with lotuses that are full of fragrance. They were there were bees and there were bees and birds chipping on the trees. The sand was so clean and soft. So they sat at this perfect place to have their lunch. And then Krishna told the Gopas, now let the cows to drink some water from the Yamuna River. After that, the Gopas took out all their different box and placed the food. They start sharing their food feeding one another, laughing at Krishna's joke, enjoying themselves. On the other hand, the demigods and Lord Brahma, who is the chief of the devatas, he had seen that the devotees were celebrating Krishna's killing of Anga earlier. Now, Brahma is seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one who eats the offering of all yagyas by great, greater sages, also where the demigods, they go through so much of elaborate sacrifices to set, uh, satisfy him. Here, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is eating the remnants from the mouth of the little cowherd boys, and he seems to be very happy. He is the Supreme Creator, Maintainer, Annihilator of all the existence. He is laughing with them like an ordinary boy. So this one mystified Brahma. It was beyond his calculation. He asks, how can God be so ordinary and so playful? How can he be so subordinate to his own friends? They are like being equal to one another. So Lord Prabhupada here wanted to test Krishna. He wanted to show his powers and he wanted to know what this ordinary coward boy who claimed to be Krishna, what he can do. So Brahma, what he did, he looked the cows far away with fresh grass. The gopas suddenly realized and become so scared that the calf was, calves were nowhere to be seen. Krishna being the servant of his devotees, he will say, I will go and look for the cows. You all continue to enjoy eating. So Krishna will personally go and look for cows. 
uh, the calves which are missing. So you look at everywhere, the river banks, mountain, valley, but he couldn't find the cows anywhere. When he returned, his cowherd friends were also missing. So as we know, Krishna knows everything. He's the, he's the Paramatma that resides in everyone's heart. He knows the past, future and present. He knows everyone's desire and every activity of the living being. So he immediately knew it was Lord Brahma's trick. But Krishna will pretend to just uh, lead Brahma into the Leela. So he'll pretend like he's being bewildered and he'll walk around asking, where are my friends? Where are my cows? He's being so sad. Brahma, in the other hand, from up, he sees that and he feels so relieved. Oh, I guess I have succeeded with my plan. <laughs> so he, uh, Krishna here actually wanted to prove, uh, uh, also wanted to please the mothers of the cows and the cowherd boys. So now Krishna will expel himself to each one of the cows and the cowherd boys. Each one of the gopas will reappear, but now as Krishna, they will all go back to the village of Vindavan in the evening. And the mothers of the gopas were much more thrilled that before they will embrace their, their sons, they will start tearing with love that they never felt before. Similarly, the cows will be so attached to their calves, calves even way more than before. This went on for one year. So about five to six days before the end of year, uh, Balaram will witness, suddenly will witness an unusual affection between the cows and the calves. Uh, Balaram was not kidnap kidnapped by uh, Brahma because on that day he wasn't there. It was his birthday, so Rohini, Rohini mother will keep him in the house. So after seeing all this, Balaram will inquire to Krishna. Then Krishna will tell him what actually happened. So exactly one year later, Brahma, for him is one moment, he will come and see what effect he has made in Vrindavan. So he will see Krishna playing with his coward boys and the calves are also there. But uh, Brahma will realize, actually I put them, put everyone in mystical sleep. How are they here? So he will go back to check and they are also there. Then he will be so bewildered, which one is real? They look alike. So am I having the real ones or these are the real ones? So Brahma will be, Brahma will be the most bewildered and confused he's ever been in his entire life. So in the peak of bewilderment, he will see every calf and cowherd boy manifested in the form of Vishnu, the four-handed form with blue complexion, exactly like Vishnu. He also sees around each Vishnu form, there's all the demigods, all living ent entity, the entire Mahatattva, personification of the three modes of material nature, every consciousness, sages and rishis, they are all worshipping limit, the limitless form of Vishnu. Brahma will be so uh, bewildered that his mind will be blank and the body will paralyze. At this moment, he is totally humbled. Here Krishna is showing Brahma is such a great person which is born from the lotus, from the navel of Lord Vishnu. He is full of the knowledge of, of the Vedas. Even he has certain material vulnerabilities. Although he is a great personality, Krishna saw a false, of, a false pride in Brahma. And Krishna want to actually relieve Brahma from all this completely. Brahma will then realize, he will compare his, realiza his realization that he is, he knows that he's the most powerful personality in this entire universe, but his powers are compared to a, a firefly where the, the tiny firefly in total di darkness, it thinks that it's light, it's lighting up the entire sky. But when, when morning comes and the sun come out, the, the firefly will then realize its light is so insignificant to the sun. Similarly, he will realize that he's, he's, he's totally insignificant in front of the greatness of Lord Vishnu. Okay, so once you open your, his eyes, one, one by one Vishnu will be disappearing, left with the one and only little Krishna standing alone. Then he will realize who Krishna is. As Krishna says in 7.3, out of many thousand among of men, one may try for perfection, but who have really achieved, achieved for perfection, hardly once through, uh, knowly through me, uh, no, uh, hardly one knows me in truth. Here, Brahma being in charge of the duty of creation, very wise, knowledgeable, can be also be bewildered. Krishna has also stated one can only truly understand him with devotion, which is bhakti. 
Oh, all right. Thank you so much, Mataji. How is my audio now? Is it the it's same? Here, Mataji. Okay, so next time I should just go out and come back. Okay, so thank you so much, Mataji. Uh, Mataji, is this the way um, Krishna shows uh, Brahma that he is not the only Brahma in the entire creation? Or that's yes, Mataji. Yes, all the demigods will appear. And mm. here, uh, all the Brahmas will come. These Brahma are only four head, but there is also Brahmas from other universe with uh, hundreds of heads, thousands of heads. Similarly, there will be also seven there. Like that, they uh, based on the size of universe, they will display their form. So then Brahma will feel so uh, humiliated, you know, he'll feel like so insignificant that he only has four heads. Yes. Like yes, they are. So there are two things Krishna will um it's usually when krishna appears right so he always killed two mangoes in a go so one to show uh brahma that he is not ordinary though he appears ordinary and number two he wants to show uh lord brahma his true position that he is not the only person he's the he's not the only creator in this universe and they are uh, in the creation but there are also other brahmas who are even bigger and more stronger. So usually the number of heads of Brahma is mentioned to be to follow the size of the universe. So the size of our universe, um, it's uh, sufficient uh, to be managed by uh, Brahma with four heads. So there are bigger universes. So some, Balaram, uh, some Brahmas will have more heads. Okay, so that's how it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I will stop this one and then we'll go to chapter 8. Again, thank you so much, uh, Shamla Mataji. Okay, so we also will have some readings today for extra verses. So I need somebody to be standby with the Bhagavad Gita. So the moment I ask for somebody to volunteer, so quickly volunteer, yeah. Okay, All right. Okay, so who's doing invocation? Uh, sorry, Vashya uh, Tantriya Sara. Hold on, yeah. I think there's one Mataji cannot come in. Is there anybody assigned for this uh, sloka, Vaishnava Tantriya? Kuhan Prabhu, right? Oh, yes, Mataji. Okay, so uh, I shall begin. Huh? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Okay. Deviki Nandana, Krishna Gita Patena Tusiti, Yatana Vedi, Danena Yakya Tirta, Vratadibisi. The son of Devaki, the supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, cannot be satisfied by anyone's study of the Vedas, charity, sacrifice, pilgrimage, or vows, as much as he is satisfied by the devotional recitation of the Gita. Vaishnava Tantriya Sara, when you pray. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. So it's raining here, so in case my line is not stable, so do alert me. Okay, so let's take blessings of Sri Sri Radha Goklananda. Uh, prayers to the Vaishnava teachers. Spiritual teachers. O Matyana Timirandhasya, Nyananjana Salakaya, Chaksurun Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha. Namao Krishna Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutali, Shri Madeva Kivedanta, Swami Nitinamine, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharini, Nirvisesha Sunyavadi, Paschata Desha Tarini. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Everyone together? Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Okay, somebody has two devices, so you uh you mute the other one. Okay, so thank you everyone. Swila Prabhupaki Jai Gita Mahatmya. Gita ya pustakam yatra, nitya patascha vartate, tatra sarvani tirtani, 
Bhutale, Sri Vaishnava Tantriya Sarafati. Translation All the holy places in this universe, such as Pragaya, are eternally present wherever the Gita, the eternal book of divine song, divine song is present. Okay, thank you, Mataji. Okay, so you see this uh, word here, Prayag. What is Prayag? Has anyone been to any of the Prayags? Prayag means confluence of two or more holy rivers. Okay, let me show you some pictures. Huh? There are famous five Prayags. Who has been? Yes, which, which Prayag Prabhu? Okay, That's a, Prayag means confluence, right? So Ganges meeting, something. Okay, so let's see five Prayags here. This is Vishnu Prayag. Okay, this is Nanda Prayag. These are the different uh, locations. Ah, yes. Okay. This is Karna Praya. Here, this is Daulikanga, Alaknanda. These are all very famous places. So, Alaknanda River ca can join with Nandakni River in a different location. Alaknanda can also join with Pinda Rivers at Karna Praya. And then there is uh, Rudra Praya. Alaknanda joins Mandakini Rivers. And then there is Dev Praya, Confluence Alakananda, Bhagirati Rivers. Okay. So generally Praya means uh, confluence of two or more rivers where um, these are this is these are the places where a few important things will take place, like um, they will take bath before worship, all the sages, they will they will congregate there. Okay, they'll meet there and then they will some they will do Shraddha. Shraddha ceremony means uh, uh, prayers for the departed souls. All right, and then the, the, the worship of the river itself also will take place there. Allahabad is called Triveni Sagra. Oh, Triveni means three rivers, is it, Prabhu? Allah, Allahabad, yeah. So is this Ganga, Jamuna, Saraswati? Ah, okay, thank you, Prabhu. Right, so Vishnu Praya, Nanda Praya, Karna Praya, Rudra Praya, Dev Praya. I have no money to go to all these places. So I am sitting here and we are reading Bhagavad Gita. So all the Prayaks are present here. Okay, <laughs> cheap and best. All right, so this is the activity we are doing now. We are doing a sacred activity uh, equivalent to this, even better than, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, there should be more, yeah, Prabhu. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think this is the cheapest sit at our own place. <laughs> okay, no flight ticket, no visa. There are more. Ah, okay. All right. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Seems like you have traveled pretty a lot. Okay, so we will enter today's chapter, chapter eight, attaining the supreme. Now let's play a game, yeah, a quick one. So we have covered seven chapters. Do not open your book, do not open your notes, nothing from your memory. What was the title of the first chapter? Or what did you learn in first chapter? I want the answers to come in very, very fast. Ah, yeah, parents play a bit more. Mm. Mm. Okay, very good. So it's called setting the scene or observing the armies. Uh, yes, observing the uh, don't see the book, okay? Okay, all come from your memory. Huh? So this is our eight day. We are eight day. Tomorrow is nine day. That means you have we have spent ten day. By tomorrow we spend ten days together. Okay, no problem. No, okay, it's all right. What is the topic in chapter two? What is the title of chapter two? What did we learn in chapter two? Okay, Darshini Mataji, contents of the Gita summarized, but I want to know what did we learn? Okay, Dasaradam Prabhu, Sankhya Yoga, can I have more details on that? I want you to know the flow, yeah, where are we heading? We are now from a very, um, uh, very uh, flat place, we are going, we are climbing, our hiking is becoming intense now, okay? Tomorrow will be the peak, like we are Exactly, we'll be in the middle of the Bhagavad Gita tomorrow. Right. This is what I want to see. Analytical study of body and soul. From karma to jnana yoga. Very good. Chapter 3.
Mm. Could you tell in English? Okay, correct. The karma yoga is correct. If somebody asks you, what did you learn in chapter one, chapter two, chapter three? So how do you tell? What did you learn in chapter three? Very good. Yes. Correct. Okay, very good. So far, so good. Chapter four. What did you learn? What did we learn in chapter four? No, I hope nobody is opening the book, yeah? Everything must come from your memory. That's why we do recap. So you know the sequence, connection. Hmm, chapter four. What is an important thing that we learn inside there? Yeah, what knowledge is that? Oh, okay, engineering three, guru parampara. What knowledge is that? Scientific knowledge, material knowledge, spiritual knowledge. What knowledge is that? Is there anybody can remember the title? Okay, you all are correct. Okay, we learned the ancient history of Bhagavad Gita, Guru Parampara. Yes, Shamala Mataji. Very good. Yes, Dasaradha Prabhu, Sampradaya. Transcendental knowledge. Why? Earlier we learned about doing Karma Yoga. He do work without attachment to the result. And then Krishna gives knowledge. So you, you gain more knowledge on that. And then we enter chapter 5. Ah, this is the part. It's a little tricky. Chapter 5. What yoga? It's similar to chapter 3, isn't it? Yes. Hello, Mashtanga Bulum Lagi. Yes. Sivaranjan Mataji, you are there. Karma yoga, work in Krishna consciousness. So earlier you were just working, working uh, detached from the results. Okay. Then later when you get the knowledge, you want to surrender the uh, results to Krishna. So karma yoga dash uh, work in Krishna consciousness. So that is entering bhakti yoga already. Okay. Chapter six. Hmm. How do you relate chapter 5 to chapter 6? Because Krishna already said to see everybody with equal vision. So how to realize the Lord in the heart is as Paramatma. And how you realize the Paramatma is through the Jnana Yoga. Okay. All living entities are same. Okay. Chapter, okay, so that's end of segment one. And then at the end, Krishna says, uh, after Sankhya Yoga, Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, he will say the Supreme uh, Yogi is one who is involved in Bhakti. That's how he takes us to chapter seven. Yesterday. What was the title? What did we learn yesterday? Okay, yes, location, how to meditate. So these are all chapter six. Knowledge of the absolute. Okay, so what? Yes. Mm. Some more? Mm. Right. What else? What else he declared about himself yesterday? Faster, huh? we have to run. How come the earlier chapter so you had a lot, you all had a lot more to say? Chapter 7 just over yesterday. Um, yeah, oh, okay, very good. Pious and non pious who comes to Krishna. Okay, writing down notes. <laughs> Very good. The pearl story. So basically, remember this. Krishna already said that he is supreme. But we want to know more 
All right, to know more, I mean, to love him, we need to know more about him. To know more about somebody, we have to hear. And to hear, we have to, there were two, two sources given. Yesterday also I mentioned, the other day also I mentioned, and today also I shared in the group. One is by Krishna and another one is about Krishna. Very good. And very good, Lavanya Mataji. Even though these verses were not put on the slide yesterday, Mataji can remember Krishna is the taste of water, the silver ohm, the strength of the, the prowess of the strength, the intelligence of the intelligent, all these, okay? All right. To show that he is the essence of all these uh, existence. Okay, very good. So last chapter. Okay, thank you so much. Huh? We have done a very quick recap. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So the last chapter was knowledge of the absolute. Okay, we Krishna briefly mentioned about his opulence. So that's not about it. Yeah, later on Krishna will tell more about his opulence. Okay, so these chapters after this is going to get even more interesting. Okay, now this chapter here in chapter A, Krishna is telling how to attain him. Okay, how to attain him when you're dying, yeah. right? So basically this chapter is about art of dying. So usually this chapter is very interesting. Somehow naturally humans are very, uh, or I, I don't know, maybe Hindus particularly, they are very, uh, very curious. They become very, uh, uh, what do you call that? Very interested to know what happens at the time of death, after death, before death. Okay, so we will not cover very detailed. So we'll only, as usual, we'll only cover the prominent verses, okay? So in this chapter, Arjuna will ask eight questions. But this course for this uh, today, we will only cover um, topics pertaining to only one of the questions that Arjuna asked, okay? So the chapter will begin. Okay, this chapter is about factors that determine soul's destination when it leaves the body. Interesting or not? You want to know where you want to go next, isn't it? Because you have 8.6 million uh, clothes to choose from. Your soul has such a big wardrobe. So you want to make sure that the soul chooses the right dress for your next birth. Okay, now um, I would like somebody to read uh, 8.1 from the book. From the book. I'm afraid I'll be calling the same person. So if anybody would like to take a chance to read, you can read. I can read, Mataji. Okay, Janani. Arjuna inquired, O oh my Lord, O oh Supreme Person, what is Brahman? What is the self? What are fruitive activities? What is the material manifestation? And what are the demigods? Please explain this to me. Okay, thank you, Janani. So here... How many questions uh, Arjuna asked? Did anybody count? <laughs> what is Brahman? What is the self? What is fruitive activities? What is... Uh, okay, okay. I don't want to give all the answers. Yes, very good. Very, very sharp. Five questions. Okay, Arjuna asked five questions. Okay, and then he goes on to the next verse where he asks the remaining three questions. Yes, correct. Okay, so who is reading 8.5? Uh, I text message. Okay. And whoever at the end of his life quits his body remembering me. Oh, Mataji, eight point two, right? Oh, Are you I... Lavanya Jnana Segre? Yes, Mataji. Uh eight point five, Mataji. I hey, sorry, sorry. Oh my god, I think I missed out this eight point two. Sorry, Mataji. Can you also read this for us, please? Okay, can Mataji. Who is the Lord of sacrifice and how does he live in the body? O Madhusudana. And how can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Okay, thank you. So here, Arjuna is asking the remaining three questions. So can you tell me what is the first question? Anyone? I don't think I ask very simple questions. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you all are listening. <laughs> what is the first question? Sorry, on this on this slide, that means a sixth question. Yes, who is the Lord of Sacrifice? Next question. I know you all must be tired after work. So oh, does he live in the body? Yeah, so can just unmute and speak. Yes. Second question. Third question. 
I mean, eighth question. <laughs> in your own words, in your own words. Okay, how does he live? How in the can those engage in devotional service? No, luckily I asked this question. What is the last question? Eh, why everybody silent already? All the answers are not coming in. The last question is the most important question. How to remember Krishna at the time of death? Yes, how to remember Krishna at the time of death. But yes, now the answers are coming. All right, very good. Yes. Okay, how to remember Krishna at the time of death? The answer to this question will be the topic of our class today. How? Uh, no, actually, what la this last question is about how a person who engages himself in the devotion service can remember Krishna at the time of death. So that means he already knows how to engage in devotion service. His life has been dedicated or filled with doing devotion service. Now, the next question is how a person, a bhakti yogi, can remember Krishna at the time of death. Okay. This is uh, so. The question is this: Yeah, how can those engage in devotion service know you at the time of death? Okay, Lavanya Mataji, again, your turn. Okay, Mata. And whoever at the end of his life quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this, there is no doubt. Okay, so thank you, Mataji. So before this, uh, Krishna will answer. This is Krishna's answer for the eighth question. So in text three, four, and five, Krishna will answer the other five questions earlier. Okay, so he will say, who is Brahman? Uh, what is this eternal nature? Who is the demigod? Uh, he will, and he will say, who is he? Who is Adi Daiva? And who is the Adi Yatna? Everything he will say, it's me actually. So you, are, you can actually read uh, from your Bhagavad Gita. And here he said, whoever at the end of his life quits his body, remembering me alone at once attain my nature. Of this, there is no doubt. So here, this my nature, I will explain later. It's not like we will become like Krishna. So it's not that. So there is explanation. So before that, who... Okay, um, I accidentally put this out already. So you all know Bhishma, right? Bhishma is the person from the opposite uh, team that... Arjuna supposed to kill, which he was so reluctant to kill. So finally, it was time for Bhishma to leave his body. But did he get killed right away? Usually when somebody kill you or shoot you or stab you, you will die, right? Immediately. But why Bhishma was sit, like, you know, like he's lying on the bed of arrows and he was not leaving his body. Anybody knows why? He was actually preparing to leave the body. He was not dying yet. Anybody knows why? Okay. He has a boon. Oh, okay. Oh, waiting for the right time. Uh, externally, yes. He's waiting he for the right time. He can die whenever he wants to die. Yes. Venukuma Prabhu, Shamala Mataji. Uh, he can actually choose when to die. So the name of that boon is Icha Mrityu. With Icha Mrityu means he can choose when to die. So externally, it is said that he's waiting for some Uttaranayana to come, some, some position of the sun and, and everything. But internally, what was he waiting for? Anybody Krishna. know? Yeah, he wants to see Krishna before he leaves the body. All right. Before he actually left the body, he, he spent a quite a number of days speaking he, who, he, who he was speaking to. He was actually giving uh, advices, philosophical advices to Yudhishthira. Oh, is it? Uh, that, not, that one I'm not so sure, Prabhu. But okay, yeah, that's an added information. Right. Uh, he was actually talking to the Pandavas. And he was talking to the Yudhishthira how to be a good king. He was giving all these political advices. So he was giving so many instructions to Maharaja Yudhishthira while he was, he was about to die. 
right? How to uh, perform duty of the king properly, how to rule properly, right? So finally, Lord Krishna came to witness the departure and then Bhishma departed. Thus, his departure was very glorious. So can you see, a devote, when a devotee dies, the death is called glorious because the way they die, the art of dying is different. They don't die like cats and dogs. So he wants to see Krishna. Of course, those days, Bhisma was so fortunate that he, I mean, that, that, that time Krishna was personally present on earth. People were able to see him. All right. So in today's world, we are not so fortunate to see the Lord with our own naked eyes. So how can we leave our body then remembering Krishna? Okay, so that also we will see. Okay, he is telling here, remembering me alone, yeah? Not remembering him and other things or not remembering him, but remembering other things. So it's not like that, yeah? Remembering him alone. And this is a promise that he makes, yeah? Of this, there is no doubt. So uh, 500 plus years ago, there was this particular personality called Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur was originally a Muslim, all right? But because of association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was none other than Krishna himself, he has taken up the Krishna conscious life. And he chant, um, is it 300,000 holy name? 300,000? Okay, he chants this number of holy name Maha Mantra every day without fail. He is so dedicated to the chanting of the holy name so much so that he was given the name Nama Acharya. Nama means name, Acharya means Guru. Okay, born Muslim, but because of association with Krishna himself, he has transformed and he is given the title Nama Acharya. Now, the problem is that the Muslim rulers, they disliked him doing this that he's going around and chanting and asking people to chant. So what happened is that he was beaten in a number of marketplaces until he died. Okay, so finally when he died, okay, uh, Mahaprabhu, this is Krishna, yeah, Mahaprabhu, this is another story where Krishna comes in a golden form, okay, and he wants to see why the devotees love me so much. What is the pleasure that they are getting by loving me and it, it, is, is, uh, it's bewildering, all right? What is so great about me that the devotee is finding more pleasure than me. Like he's enjoying everything, but the devotee seems to be more enjoyable to love him. So he took the role of a devotee. He came as a normal brahmana. Of course, he was not an ordinary brahmana. He, he was a very, a, such a pandit when he came. All right, he's very intelligent. Like, uh, you know, how Ramanuja Acharya, Madhu Acharya used to go for debates, right? And win all the debates. And this is how Mahaprabhu was doing uh, during, uh, this, during this incarnation. Okay, so Mahaprabhu carried Haridas Thakur to the beach to bury, to perform a, the funeral rites for Haridas Thakur. So what happened here is that during his, uh, this ceremony, right? The entire ambience was filled with the chanting of Mahamantra. Okay, he was surrounded by a Mahamantra. And this is how a devotee should die. Anybody should die. He should be dying with the company of the holy name, the devotees, the bhajans, the kirtans, the recitation of sastras. This is how a devotee should live. Because at the end of the time, okay, here Haridas Thakur's date already. But when you're about to die, when you see someone is about to die, who is not able to come to back to consciousness or they're not going to come back to normal life. Okay, so you have to send them off in this manner. Okay, if they can't remember Krishna at the time of death, we have to help them. Okay, we have to fill the ambience with that kind of uh, environment where Krishna's thoughts are there. Okay, so it is not so easy that uh, we can have a life that whichever way that we want. And at the end of the life, we want to remember Krishna. It's very difficult that way. It's almost impossible. This is simply just like how we study for exam. If you do not spend much time, like the entire year to do your revision, it's unlikely we're going to pass the exam at the end of the year. Okay, so if you have been preparing for your exam, all the time, then you don't have to worry when the exam is going to come. You will ace it. 
All right. So basically, this is all about practice. So otherwise, it's going to become a challenge for us because we are having so many attachments and all this attachment, these activities, right? It will play in your mind as a flashback, like a movie flashback, all like that will come, right? So if you leave your body, when, when, your, when the, the mind is attached to something material, and this is what you're going to get in the, in the next slide. So we will see this in the subsequent slide. Okay, so this is general law of destination after death. 8.6. Can we have somebody read first and then I will explain. Who's turn? Hare Krishna Mataji. Translation. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O oh, son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mataji. So you all can read that again. This is very important, yeah? Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. So Krishna is saying this. So you can imagine how careful we should be about our mind and mental at the time of death. Yeah, I will, I will, this is a very popular question. This is FAQ, I will answer that. All right. Okay, so this man, he's in the hospital. He knows that he's going to die. All right. So if he's lucky, he knows that he's going to die. Okay, if he's conscious. Yeah. So we don't know what is on his mind. He probably, what do you think will be on his mind? What will be probably running on the mind of a person at deathbed in the hospital? Very good, family. Hmm. Who's going to take over? Finance. Then write will. <laughs> write your will. Unachieved ambition, unfulfilled desires. Yes. Regrets. Yes. Okay. So there can be many things on his head, isn't it? All right. Let's look at this uh, frog and the fly. What do you think will be running on the fly's head at the jaw of death for the fly? Who can tell? How to escape? I think trapped already. <laughs> no escaping, I think. Sticky, right? Frog's tongue sticky, right? Fear. Okay. Close. Very close. Fear, what else? Try to put yourself in the shoe of the fly. Give up, give up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's actually his condition, giving up, surrendering. What could be running on his mind? What is the last thing that he's actually seeing or thinking? <laughs> yes. He is actually thinking of the frog. Yeah, of course, life is over. But how? What is the state that he is dying? He is thinking about the frog. So according to Krishna, whatever, whatever playing on your mind, when you leave the body, that you will get in your next life. So most likely, this fly is going to be born as Mmm, frog. Yes. Okay. Now, look at this picture here. Who is this personality? Yes, frog. All right. Can you imagine if you like, mm, you're like walking, right? Suddenly you trip on something and then you say some bad words or some inappropriate words. And then let's say that is our final word that we're going to say. Can you imagine what will happen to us? All right. So, so how are we going? What are we going to do about it? Okay. So this is all about practice. Okay. So now going back to this picture, yeah. Who is this? Okay. You can see a. Mm-hmm. Bharat Maharaj. What 
is that animal in the picture? Deer. Very good. Okay. All right. So there is a story here. I'll try to be as quick as possible. Maharaja Bharat, the king of Bharat, okay, he was a great devotee. Right. So finally, he wants to um, retire to the forest after relinquishing all his roles, okay, his duties. He went. As he was, uh, you know, taking water for his prayers from a river, he actually saw a tiger chasing a pregnant deer. So as the deer out of fear jumped over the river, the foe, right? It's the baby deer, what do you call it? Foe, right? It fell off, fell to the water. But the mother kept running. The mother ran away already. Okay, the tiger also chased the mother and went off. So what Maharaja Bharat did, he carried the baby and then he started taking care of the baby. Okay, when he was taking care of the baby, he developed so much of attachment towards that baby. Okay, um, and then what happens is that when he gets old and he's about to die, naturally, what comes to his mind? Who is going to take care of this deer? All right, and, uh, and naturally, the deer was on his mind when he left the body. Okay, so according to the law of nature, he, the next, his next birth, he was born as a deer. Okay, but because he was a great devotee and he was a son of Rishabhadev, Rishabhadev is also one of the incarnation of Krishna. Like I, I explained earlier, Krishna has so many incarnations. All right. So when he was born as a deer, he remembered who he was in the past birth and he regretted so much that he wasted his life. Now he has to wait for another birth to be born as a human being to perfect his life to go back to Godhead. Now what happens is that because he was so conscious about his uh, past life and he's just so certain about his direction, he find himself a shelter at ashram nearby where there were lots of sages staying. So what this deer, Bharata, in the form of deer, he will stay there listening to their katas, discussions. He will take prashad from there. He will just hang around there. Okay, so when he died, he was thinking about Krishna and he died. The next birth, he was born as Jada Bharat. Okay, his name was Jada Bharat in the subsequent birth. Now, as a Jada Bharat, he became, of course, his consciousness was still there and he remembered what happened to his past lives, all right? So as Jada Bharat, as the name uh, proposes Jada, what is Jada? It's very close to a Tamil word. What is Jada? Body, Madhavi. I know, okay, it's not Jada, yeah? It's not Jada, it's Jadam. <laughs> what is Jadam? Why somebody you say Jadam? Anybody from the Tamil background? I'm not from Tamil background, <laughs> actually. Yeah, I didn't go for Tamil school or what. Just learn along the way because of my mom. What is Jada? Like, or Jadam? Nobody? Nobody knows? Lifeless, uh -huh. Mataji. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So now that he he is a living person, what does that imply? Dumb? No, dumb. Not lazy. He's 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 not lazy. He knows what's happening. Jada means like a person without feelings, isn't it? Very detached. Yes. Right, so he was like that. He led a, a very detached life, like uh, he doesn't have any possessions. Okay, so there was a actually a long story about him, how he actually demonstrated senseless. Mm, I wouldn't say senseless, I would say detached, like a jadam, like has no uh, desires, right? No feelings, no desires, no um. Just like that, like renounced, right? So that's him. 
Okay, so finally, when he died, he went back to God. It's a very beautiful story. It's in Bhagavadam. So it's, you can find this in Veda base if you do not have the book. Okay, there'll be a long conversation where the king, one king will talk to him. And even when he walked, he will not step on the ants. And because of that, a king will get angry because you're carrying the palanquin and he starts to cross over all the ants that's on the road. So the king will get very angry. So who is this person carrying the palanquin that is no, so wobbly? Then there'll be a conversation. Oh, why you can't step on the ants or what? No, they are just living entities. We cannot do that because they're going to disturb their life cycles and everything. So there's a long conversation between them. All right, so this is the story of Jarabara. So when somebody says that thinking of animal when you are dying, it's quickly you can bring in Jara, uh, Maharaja Bharat's story. Okay, he, he was he was a, such a, actually he had so much of fame, name, prestige, and he renounced everything. After a great deal of renunciation, he comes to the forest and the slightest distraction, he got attached to the deer. And what happens? He has to take two more birds. Okay, so previous thoughts are the cause of the cause of thoughts at time of death. Okay, oh, oh there are pictures here, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is what happened. Okay, at the time of that, he was thinking about the deer and all the Jarabara story all came. Okay, so uh, what can we do? What can we do that uh, if we are able to, then we have to constantly chant the Maha Mantra so that at the time of that, we will automatically remember about Krishna or remember Krishna. Okay, so just now there was a question, what if it's an accident? Like you caught off guard, you're not prepared. Okay, so at that time, whatever you have been practicing your entire life will flash and that will determine where you're going to go. Okay, so if you have been dedicating your life for Krishna the, your, the entire time or as much as you could, all right, Krishna will come to your mind because there was a time somebody asked this question to uh, Prabhupada. So Prabhupada said, for those who have surrendered sincere souls, Krishna will force himself into your mind. Okay? So that is important. Sometimes it's not entirely about what you think at the time of the death, but it's also about what you've been doing your entire life. And this question was also asked to Ramanujacharya. So, so this is a very nice verse. I forgot the Alvar's name because uh, I read it long ago. Um, Ramanujacharya will, say, will explain to this person who asked this question that he will say, I think this Prabhupada's uh, advice coming from there, Ramanujacharya. So Ramanujacharya will say, Krishna will force himself to your mind, okay, and will save you. So this Alvar, what he did, he said a prayer. He said a prayer whereby, see Krishna, at the time of that, I don't know whether I will remember you. I don't know what kind of situation I will be in, all right? But because I don't know what's going to happen in the future, I am telling you now, please protect me. Please come to my mind when I die. You know, what is the line that he will say? He will say like that. It's a very beautiful line. I try to look for it. Something like that. Like he's booking. I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I'm telling you now. So please don't forsake me. So these are the things that you can beg Krishna, tell Krishna. At the same time, we also have to demonstrate in our life how much we want to think about Krishna at the time of death. And when can we do this? Especially not just when we are happy. Because at the time of death, it seems that you will feel pain like being stung by 20,000 or 40,000 scorpions. So at that time of death, do you really think we can think of anything other than the pain? It's very difficult. And it is also mentioned that when you're going to die, you cannot see, you cannot hear, you cannot talk. Right? You cannot do anything. Only the flashbacks will keep coming. All right? So we want to ensure that the flashback that's going to come at the time of death is the summum bonum or the, the conclusion of what we have accumulated our entire life. If you've been attached to your pet so much, then naturally you're going to think about your pet at the end of your life. Right, And there was a story whereby this person who was about to die, he was so attached to the family. He was a big family. He was so attached that he was thinking about just the family and he born as a, a tree. I think he grew as a tree outside the house or he became a cobbler working outside of the house. Okay, something like that. 
And then there was also one time Prabhupada was uh, seen um, in the kitchen. Uh, he was talking to a rat. Somebody uh, peeked through the door and saw Prabhupada was talking to the rat. He was saying, I know who you were before, so you better be good. Something like that he was talking. So sometimes these great sadhus, right, they can actually know certain things, but they just don't show it. Okay, because otherwise it's going to get cheap adoration. But somehow when people see like this, they will share. That's how things will go. But otherwise, Prabhupada never actually uh, exhibit these kind of uh, things openly. All right, but he has mentioned about this old man who left the body and he grew as a tree outside. So be because he wants to watch over the family all the time, so he became the tree. So as a tree, he's watching the house in that sense. All right, and can you imagine if you're born as a tree, how long it's going to take for you to finish your one cycle? All right, it's very, very, it's going to be very, very long. So this is attachment. All right, so, uh, so this application is that we have to be very careful where our consciousness is most of the time. What are we thinking all the time? What are we remembering? What are we speaking about? Worst of the family book for yeah. There's a twist in the story. Yeah, right? So we always want to think good things, especially transcendental things. Okay, a simple example is this, yeah? If, you, if, you, if, if you're thinking about Krishna, it's too fast stretch. Whatever I'm saying is too fast stretch for you. You think about certain things. You are so engrossed in during the day. Doesn't it come in your dream? Yeah? So it's like that. So this is just a one-day incident. So can you imagine if you're going to live for 70, 80 years old and how, many, how much of memories you're going to store in your uh, mind? All the impressions, it's going to come up one day. Okay, um, I think that's about it, uh, attaining the Supreme, because we can go on talking about it, right? Okay, moving on to 8.7. So this chapter is very important here. Yeah? It should be making a lot of changes in your life moving forward after knowing this. We want to see what we are thinking at the time of that. 8.7, Mataji. Manali Mataji is not here. Mm, Sasi Rekha Mataji. Okay. Anybody else? Manali Hi. Mataji is here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, thinking of Krishna always. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting with your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. All right. Thank you, Mataji. So here, uh, Lord Krishna is not encouraging Arjuna to stop his activities. You go on fighting, but at the same time, you think of me. Okay. So you engage your mental, physical and intellect in thinking about me. So mentally you're thinking about me. Physically you're doing service for me. So like this, this way the intellect will, uh, con uh, will always have his thoughts absorbed in Krishna. Okay. Now we have to understand that it's not going to be the same for everyone. Some people, they're going to be so attached to a lot of other things like the pets or the house, the family. All right. Well, not everybody can have this, but it's all through practice. Remember Krishna said practice and detachment. Okay. Right, so uh, if you think that I have not seen Krishna, how am I going to remember about him? So this is what we are doing. We are hearing about him. We are discussing about him. We are talking about him. Okay, we have to hear his leelas like we heard about the Brahma Vimohana Leela today. And uh, previously, we, Mataji also uh, narrated a few other stories. So like this, we have to practice ourselves, make it a habit of hearing about Krishna. So the more you hear, the more you talk about him. This is how he's going to fill your mind because you always like to fill your mind about people that you like, isn't it? For a mother, they're always thinking about their children. What my children is doing? Have they done their homework? Have they eaten? What are they doing? Are they on the TV? Are they playing game? Right? Very natural, isn't it? So at the time of the death, for a mother, what they will think? Oh, who's going to take care of my child? So it's the same thing. It's the same application, same concept. 
okay and krishna has given us so many things to talk about him you can talk about an entire bhagavad gita forever you can talk about bhagavadam and there is chaitanya charitamrita and he has given us so many pastime he has given the superheroic pastime he has given a very cute children pastime friendship pastime lovers pastime uh, son pastime brothers pastime he has so many pastime actually there are five ways to love krishna he is filled with rasas you want what what do you want from krishna everything he gives okay so uh, he is full of rasa rasas means taste um is there any other word for rasas uh, there is santa ras sakya ras dasya ras batsalya ras and madurya ras means you can love krishna this five ways means you can love him neutrally like with awe and reverence you can do that or you can do as sakya ras you can love him as a friend you can love him as a dasya ras as a master master and servant you can love him as from as a parent that is batsalya ras you can love him as your child and then you can love him as a lover madurya ras mellow yes huh rasa means mellow he's filled with mellow so he never get bored <laughs> loving him or talking about him singing about him so he always has given us a lot of things to talk about that even that one past time you can talk about 100 times or 1000 times i think my entire life i would have heard damodarila like 100 time and it's still very cute it's very cute every time somebody talk about the leela there is something new something special something fresh about that all right if somebody come and talk talk to you about my story i think the second time sudah mua already so krishna's past time is not like that that is why it is called transcendental and this will give you the result that you want okay all right so this is a quick recap to attain krishna one must remember him at the time of death you want to go to krishna you have to remember krishna okay and what happened at the time of death one will automatically remember the mood he cultivated throughout his life so it's a lifelong practice okay the most effective means for fixing the mind on krishna is hari nama sankirtana you can keep doing you don't know how to tell past time it's fine you are not good with philosophy it's fine i cannot read it's fine i cannot hear okay i i cannot hear i am i'm mute uh, deaf right so you can chant the maha mantra okay all right so uh why krishna say you must come back to me why he didn't say if you chant my name you can go to brahma loka or indra loka or heavenly planet why this is the reason 8.15 hari krishna mata ji okay mata ji after attaining me the great soul who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of misery because they have attained the highest perfection All right thank you mata ji so the great sages they do not want to come back to this material world because they know this place is full of miseries so they want to go back to the spiritual world where there are no miseries okay vaikuntha free of anxiety so that is the difference so the great souls they know what they want okay yeah so this is uh, this is an important verse for you to know that even the great yogis can distinguish between the material planet material world and spiritual world so we always want to follow their footstep okay dukha alayam dukha alayam means place of miseries ashaswatam means temporary so opposite vaikuntha there is no anxiety kunta means anxiety so why kunta means free of anxiety so here krishna talks about spiritual world all right no rebirth for pure devotees because they live in such a way that they don't want to come back they will not come back okay but there are times that they will be sent to material world as an empowered soul for preaching purposes okay this is another uh, aspect to that okay why krishna doesn't want us to come back here is because this this is what this is what i meant earlier why krishna doesn't want us to come back here because the nature of material world is like that okay why he doesn't want us to go back to or uh, go to higher planets usually we will say okay this departed soul ha- have achieved heavenly planets um you know people are complacent that uh, thinking that uh, let's pray that the soul reach heavenly planets well if you read bhagavad gita then you will know we don't want to settle for heavenly planets why this is the 
वर्स प्रिया माते जी आई डोंट नो प्रिया माते जी इज हियर ओके नो प्रिया माते जी एनीबॉडी एल्स वी नीड टू गो फॉर जय माते जी यू आर हियर आई थॉट यू आर नॉट नो आई कैन डू इट ओके राम प्रभु from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place but one who attains to my abode o son of kunti never takes birth again okay thank you prabhu so here okay if you look at the entire universe uh, chart right the top most loka is brahma loka lord brahma glad brahma's planet is the top most uh, loka in the entire this universe right this the the universe that we are in is the top most okay so there are seven upper planetary system the seven uh, lower planetary system we are in the middle planetary system okay so now the highest planet is our brahma bhavana loka okay this is brahma's loka so there are many different planets in the material world the top most is brahma loka planet of brahma here okay um i mentioned to you 7 and 7 14 planetary system okay we are in the middle so the more pious things that you do the next birth you will be elevated okay you will be elevated to higher planet system however however and 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 the the higher you go the longer your life is okay so there is a calculation how long brahma lives so how long brahma lives i think it goes up to trillion of years okay later i will share the calculation for you okay uh, how many yugas how many maha yuga the kalpa all will come in and uh, how many day time that he will live how many night time he will live actually brahma will live celestial 100 years celestial 100 years not our 100 years yeah his celestial 100 years is goes up to trillion years so now our brahma is just half 50 plus his age is now 50 plus okay so why i'm telling is this because at the end of his 100 years he will also die okay no matter how great the planets are how great the opulence there how happy you are how long you live eventually even the devas also will die at the time of pralaya they will also or will die okay which means as long as you are in the material realm everything will be destroyed at one point of time okay and here the repeated birth will birth and death will take place okay this is birth this picture is here birth so there are four miseries in life yeah birth mm, disease this is old age and this is death okay wherever you go you cannot escape this even when you go to the highest planetary system which is brahma loka people still take birth and they still die right like i said this brahma this lord indra these are all positions okay all right however krishna see if you come to my abode the vaikuntha planets and above you will never come back again okay and this is what the yogis want okay he will be back on maybe another universe or maybe on planet in uh, in planet earth as a great elevated soul um even the haridas takur it is mentioned that he is uh, the incarnation of lord brahma um i can't recall any other incarnations lord brahma has taken but i know haridas takur was said to be the incarnation of lord brahma so like this the soul will always have to take birth and to attain the position of lord brahma you have to have 100 lives of spotless character something like that you could not have done any bad things a single bad thing for 100 lives then you will attain the position of brahma after highest yes vaikuntha so so if if as long as you are not engaging in devotion service and think of krishna at the time of death you will be shifting among all these planets you can live hundreds and thousands of celestial years but you will still have to die and come back die and come back die and come back yes okay it, it really depends whether we are going from lower planetary system to highest or we are going from highest to lowest and go highest and come back to lowest it all depends on how we conduct ourselves 
Because when you go up, you're going to exhaust your pious credits. You're going to come back to a rich people's house. You, you're going to take birth in rich people's house, like what we saw yesterday. But if you do not utilize the facility, what will happen? Let's say the prodigal child, uh, what do you call that? Uh, they take up to drugs. So what happens to that? He will glide down to the mode of ignorance. And if he dies in the mode of ignorance, where he will be take birth? So all this we will cover in the Jnana Yoga segment later. Which part of three, Prabhu? Which part of the three? Oh, what three? No. This planetary system that I'm talking about is the material planetary system. So the topmost is Brahma Loka. So above Brahma Loka, there is Shiva Loka. And after that is Vaikuntha Loka. So you have Ayodhya first. You have Ayodhya, you have Vaikuntha, and then you have Goloka. So later I will share you a HD picture. How it, how the... You can see uh, the, um, the visual, the illustration. Okay, I will share that. Okay, so this is the point, all right? Rebirth in all planets except Krishna's abode. Okay, as long as we are in the egg of the universe. Uh, he is he, he said not a pure devotee of the Lord because he is still at the material realm. It's not a pure devotee. If he's pure devotee, he will be in the Vaikuntha planet. Yeah, and they still enjoy material enjoyments in all these planets. Um, 14, 14 planets, planetary system. So after that, there is a, then there is Shiva Loka. After that, there's Vaikuntha. 14, huh? 14. Okay, seven lower, seven higher. All right, so 8.28. Earth is one, Mataji. Earth is in the middle. We are right in the middle. So we have Bur, Bhuva, Swaha. Swaha means uh, Bur, Bhuva, Swaha. Yeah, so we are Bur. Then there is Bhuva, then the Swaha, the heaven. Okay, sorry, Mataji, carry on. A person who accepts the part of the ordinary service is not the fit of the result derived right from studying the Veda. Performing sacrifice, undergoing prostrate, Giving charity or pursuing philosophical and fruitless activity. Simple, simply by performing devotional service, he attains God peace, and at the end, he reached the supreme and ultimate abode. Okay, thank you, Mataji. So here, this is actually a conclusion of chapter seven and chapter eight. Okay, so you can see here one by one. This is the supreme position of the bhakti yoga. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so look at this number one, yeah, studying the Vedas. We are also reading and studying Bhagavad Gita. So we are reading the essence of Vedas, in fact. So we are covering this one already. Number two, we are also doing sacrifices. Okay, in Bhakti Yuka, we also have a lot of sacrifices. And the best sacrifice is the chanting of the holy name, Sankirtan Yagya. Austerities, we are also doing austerities. Okay, we are waking up in the morning uh, and uh, devotees, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't uh, take drugs, or they don't gamble, all right, they don't eat meat. So these are also austerities, okay? And uh, and we also follow ekadasis, all right? And some even uh, more austere that they only eat cook food cooked in the house, cooked by devotees because the consciousness has to be right. So these are all austerities, all right? Um, what else? Yeah, don't get, no gambling, no meat eating, no illicit sex, and... Um, no intoxication. So these are austerities. Giving charity. We are also giving charity as if we can um, donate prasadam for people. Okay. Charity is very important because Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, even the great souls perform charities. So later in Jnana Yoga segment, char charity can come under three modes. How to do charity? Our mentality, our recipient, what are we giving? The time, place, circumstance. We all you have to assess before you give charity to somebody. So all that we will cover later, the third segment. Okay, and uh, pursuing philosophical and fruitive activities. So this, we have changed it to uh, doing service for Krishna. Okay, so we are also doing fruitive works. Like we are working, then we take back salary. Only that we are engaging the Lakshmi in Krishna's service. Okay, uh, what else? Simply by performing devotional service, he attains all this and at the end, he reaches the supreme eternal abode. Okay, what is devotional service? This is covered in uh, this, this slide. 
Okay, I'm going to leave this here so you can read because I already touched on this yesterday where it starts with Sravanam. Remember, this is the teaching by Prahlad Maharaj. That means, uh, if anybody asks a question like, that, what is devotion service? People keep saying devotion service, devotion service. How to do devotion service? Devotion service is this nine. Meaning there are so many devotion services, but these are the main ones. It starts with hearing and then it ends at surrendering everything. So this is all of it. So you can do hearing, you can do chanting, you can remember Krishna, you can serve Krishna, you can worship him, offering prayers, become his servant, become his best friend, finally surrendering everything. And the important top three is this one. Hearing, chanting, and remembering. Okay? So there'll be, there will come more time for me to explain this. I can even explain this tomorrow. Okay? I'll touch each one of it. Okay? And this is the last slide. Anybody would like to read? Darshini Mataji? Of all the different spiritual practices, the nine forms of bhakti, paranam, kirtanam are the best causes. They have great potency to deliver Krishna and ecstatic love for him. Of these nine practices, nama, sang, kirtana is the best. By chanting the holy name without offense, one very easily obtains the priceless treasure of Krishna prema. Okay, so thanks, Mataji. So like I mentioned, out of all the devotional services, these are the best. Top nine. Okay, we will do the recap tomorrow. I will leave this here in the PDF. So I hope you all remember what we studied today. Okay, so if anybody wants Bhagavadam, you can contact me. In the meantime, you can find it in Vedabase. Uh, it's a website. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. You can stay if you all have any questions. So I owe you all the chart, right? The 14 planetary system chart. Um, what else? Yeah, that one verse from the Divya Prabandam. So let me see if I can get that. I'll share in the group. Thank you, Mataji. Yeah, it's always interesting.